the critique that I was getting you to respond to from racial justice leaders is that because they've got substantial power with the police unions, they've been able to negotiate these contracts in which, you know, maybe a city doesn't have enough money to give them a pay rise, so they negotiate discipline, disciplinary procedures. For example, you know, they don't have to release certain images or, or uh, evidence, or they can have a, a longer pause well, period, all these types of things. And I'm, I'm just asking you whether, you know, you said you're working with them to reform inside the movement, and I fully understand that. Have you found them to be sincere, the police union, um, the International Union of Police Associations, which is part of the AFL, have you found them to be sincerely um, dedicated to wanting to reform? Some very much so, some not so much so. They're like anybody else, they're not homogeneous. Right. It isn't like you say everyone's perfect or everyone's right. bad. The, the vast majority uh, of the officers that we're dealing with are very sincere right. because they understand that they, they have to be integrated into the community. That's to their best interest as well. And they want to make sure that they do the job the right way. Right. You know, the bad apples need to be cored out. And that'll happen. If we come up with policies that we can recommend, that will happen. And they will scream and it will go on deaf ears at that point. I, I wasn't, uh, to, to be clear, I, I, I wasn't trying to indict a whole category of rank and file officers. The reason I asked that question is I, I read the letter that the head of that union sent you last summer during the Black Lives Matter protests, Sam Cabral. And, you know, he eviscerated you for daring to say that America had a history of racism and violence against black people. And he said that it was ridiculous of you to call to demilitarize and to, uh, I can't remember what else he said. He said it was patently false and inflammatory and, and all that. And, it just doesn't sound to me like the rhetoric of someone who sincerely believes that his organization ought to reform themselves. I mean, <laughs> like, it seems kind of absurd to suggest that. First of all, I, I get letters like that pretty much every day. Uh, so well, holy know, hell, I mean. <laughs> oh yeah, I know, tell me. I have to d deal with them all the time. I'm surprised it wasn't uh, signed know, look, in blood or something. Don't, don't try. I'm not take, trying, he's no, the head no, of the union. No, don't, don't take one letter and then think that that represents the thinking of even the people, but all the people the in his union, because it doesn't. We're dealing with those people. They are being sincere. They are working hard to try to find real solutions to difficult, complex problems. And I, I get a little suspicious when somebody, you have a complex problem and somebody gives you a bumper sticker answer. Expel the cops. Sure, sure. Now what? No, no. I did it, now what?